Guys, how you doing? What was your reaction when you got the notification that you were going to get this honor? Uh, I was shocked. Uh, shocked in the sense of uh, oh, last couple of years I've talked to Mitch a little bit more, so it wasn't uncommon for him to want to have a conversation. So he kind of caught me off guard. I usually can see things coming before they before they get there, and he got me caught me really caught me off guard. Uh, I was excited about the opportunity. You know, it's what Kentucky means to me. Get a chance to be into the, into the Hall of Fame with just so many other athletes, and then fortunate enough to be into the, into the Hall of Fame with two guys I came in with uh, just because of COVID postponing their in, induction uh, of Wayne Turner and uh, Ron Mercer. That made it even more special. Now, Z, what, uh, when you signed with Kentucky, how did you envision your Kentucky career going and so forth? Uh, was there even a Hall of Fame then? <laughs> I don't know if there's a Hall of Fame then, so I didn't think of uh, <laughs> one day going into the Athletic Hall of Fame, but at the same time, uh, I'm probably more confident about myself than, uh, <laughs> than I should be. Uh, and what, you know, from the outside in, you know, coming, from, can, coming here to Kentucky, you know, some people considered me a project and because I was so different from so many other recruits who came before me as far as, you know, losing the weight and will I play and is this style of play suited for a guy of my size. So, uh, but I had the utmost confidence. Uh, I didn't think I would be, in the Kentucky Athletic Hall of Fame. Uh, but at the same time, uh, I had visions of having a very good career. I had visions of winning. Uh, I've always been a team guy. And I knew that uh, two things are going to happen. I'm going to play and we're going to win. Or I'm going to sit on the bench and we're going to win. Because I've always felt that if I'm at the end of your bench, the team is has to be very good. <laughs> so <laughs> that's kind of how I've always looked at things. So, you know. It's going to be some winning going on if I'm on the team. That's how I always kind of approach it. What are some things that you kind of remember the most about your time here? And just how special is this place for you as you've grown up? Uh, memories. I mean, I mean, we that 96 team was just unbelievable. I mean, those practices. Uh, <laughs> That it was just, I, I tell people all the time, you know, the argument, I think that's the greatest college basketball team of all time. Uh, I mean, it was just so many great players. I mean, we were just such a good team, well coached. I mean, the fan base just got us ready every night. Uh, I mean, we always looked at games as our day off because our practice was so intense and hard, just kind of competing against each other. So I always remember. As far as that's my my some of my fond memories, and then it was some some tough memories in the sense of uh, coming and not playing a lot as a freshman, of course, and then how hard I had to work. You know, Coach Patino uh, almost broke me a couple of times as far as how hard I had to work to actually achieve my goals. But uh, at the end of the day, I appreciate it just because I, when I left here, I was ready, and I was ready in the sense of there was nothing I was going to have to tackle that was going to be harder. So the NBA was pretty much, <laughs> I hate to say easy, but it was kind of easy for me in the sense of the work. I was ready for the work. I played with great teammates, and it was just all about going out and doing it. First of all, congratulations. Thank uh, you. Second of all, how much are you enjoying your, your current role staying in basketball? Oh, I am, uh, I'm really enjoying my current role. Uh, I'm the general manager of uh, the Oklahoma City Blue. Tonight's actually, I'm, I'm missing our season opener to be here, our first two games. Uh, and then, then I do pro personnel scouting and advising for the Thunder. Uh, it's been amazing. I've always knew that I want to go into the business side of basketball. Uh, you know, people have tried to push me into the coaching side of it, but I have no desire for that. I've always liked Putting, the th putting things together and figuring out how things work and seeing if I was, you know, if I'm smart enough to one day put together a team that can compete for a championship. But I'm fortunate, Oklahoma, Oklahoma City, the Thunder, Sam Presti, uh, the whole organization, Clay Bennett being the owner have been just unbelievable to me in the sense of giving me the opportunity to learn the business, giving me access early, even before I joined the organization to kind of see if this was something for me. It's been like a dream come true. So, and uh, the, the uh, Oklahoma City Thunder fans are have similarities to you know being here in Kentucky. So when I played there, I've always felt that as far as from an NBA team standpoint, the fan base has been really supportive of the Thunder. 
Oh, uh, yeah, you saw him last night, didn't you? I definitely like having Shea around. We need to uh, duplicate Shea. I mean, Shea has been unbelievable. He's worked hard. It's great watching him, you know, come from this program uh, to the Thunder. Uh, I was fortunate enough to add Olivier to our G League team uh, this year. Uh, you know, I got to look out for my Kentucky guys and at least give him a chance, and he's been great. Uh, it's just uh, it's been a great experience. I know you were in the process of getting in shape when you got here, mm -hmm. and you alluded to how hard Patino worked you, and they put the JV team together mm -hmm. just basically for you. Mm -hmm. You contributed as a result to two championship teams that played totally different styles. Why do you think you were able to adapt so well to the two styles and the two coaches and have the success you had? Uh, you know, I don't want to, you know, pat myself on the back in the sense of that, but I'm just, I mean, I'm pretty flexible. I'm. I do what coaches tell me, uh, at least, you know, as a player. And I just feel like I can play any style of basketball. You know, some people looked at me as far as being a big guy and stuff like there's no way he can play in a run and gun style. But uh, I'm just I'm coachable. <laughs> you tell me what you need me to do and I'm going to give it my best. Uh, we try to be a good teammate. Uh, Coach Patino, you know, it happened in the right order as far as Coach Patino getting me in the type of shape necessary to play at a high level of collegiate basketball and then Tubby coming in and we playing a little bit of a different style, but with some elements of uh, what we did with Coach Patino, uh, I just, you know, I'm coachable. I feel like uh, even my teams in the NBA, I was able to play for so long and play uh, 18 years because whatever the coach wanted me to do, I was going to give it my all. And if I couldn't, I was still going to kind of make sure my teammates did the same. You didn't want to be a coach. What was it about coaching that you did not find appealing? Uh, I always looked at it this way. Uh, uh, first, I consider myself a pretty hard worker. I was one of the early, I was early to the gym and late to leave. And the coaches were always there before me and there after me. And uh, <clears throat> after putting my wife through. 18 years of the NBA, I, it was no way I can get back on the coach's schedule of traveling for 82, you know, 41 games on the road in the hours that were necessary uh, to be in certain places at certain times. From the executive side of it, I can be a little bit more flexible where I am because, like, I'm working from here today. Uh, even though we have a game, just the flexibility of the front office kind of suit, suit me more and then, you know, my desire to kind of help put things together. Coaching, I love the individual instruction part of coaching and watching guys develop. Uh, I would I have a desire for that a little bit just because uh, from playing the game and knowing how to adjust and knowing what guys can do to kind of improve their games. But uh, the, the, and I wouldn't even call it the 9 to 5 of coaching. I'll call it more like the 6 to, to 2 a.m., the 6 a.m. to 2 a.m. of coaching. I just wasn't going to put my family, <laughs> kids included, or wife through that kind of ever again. Talking to some of your teammates from the 96 team down at the reunion in Miami, they all talked about how they, you all, I don't know if you were involved in these conversations, mm -hmm. but they were arguing over how Patino was going to do this with all the talent, all the players, all the minutes. Uh, and obviously he did. As a guy who played the game for so long at the highest level and now as, a, as an executive, what kind of appreciation do you have now for the way Patino managed the minutes and the egos? Uh, it's something that's definitely extremely tough. I mean, I'm in the G League being a, as a GM, but we kind of have the same issues as far as like we have guys come down from assignment from the Thunder who we're going to play because it's uh, to develop their games. We have guys that we've signed. We have a lot of talent. Everyone has the same goal. They want to get to the NBA. So just our coaches go through some of the same things of trying to get the best out of every player, uh, expand their games, get them ready for the next level while still trying to keep everybody happy. It's, it's a thankless, almost impossible job. And uh, you have to be a flexible and very intelligent and smart coach to get it done. Uh, coach Patino did an unbelievable job, and he explained to us that if we win, everyone will reap the benefits of that. And uh, we really bought into that. I think that year Tony led the team in minutes, and it was like it was under 30 minutes a game or something like that. 28, 28 minutes a game. I mean, how many stars kind of lead your team in minutes? 
at 28 minutes a game. So it was just everybody bought in. I mean, we had a guy like Wayne Turner uh, and uh, Ron Mercer, who were superstars coming out of high school, who normally step in and start and play a lot of minutes. They accepted their roles and understood that winning was uh, what was most important.